Well, good morning. It is the 15th of April, 2021. We are turning on to Haunted Road. I don't know why they called it that, but that's the name of this crazy turn right here. We are on our way to do a drywall repair in the ceiling. An electrician moved a light over like four or five inches and left the old hole in the ceiling where the old junction box, uh, light box used to be. So that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing today. We told the lady it'd be done today so it could be painted and she can be ready for the weekend to entertain guests. So maybe these trees do look a little haunted here, huh? Like little creepy looking trees. Imagine at nighttime, maybe they are. This is almost as bad as Philadelphia. I just want to point out that this development is one year old. Look at the roads. I can't even believe it. That's the place right there. It says, welcome. Big building. Never cut your patch to fit the hole that's there. Always cut a patch a little bit larger and cut your hole to fit your patch. Well, take a look at this. When the electrician put the three new pennant lights in, he took all the old can lights and just bent them all up into the ceiling. They're stuck there now. I can't get them out. They're, they're larger than the hole. I know you've heard it all before that you got to put pieces of wood up in here so that you have something to screw your new drywall patch to. But let me tell you, plywood is the best. Use three-quarter inch plywood because it won't split. If you use a piece of like pine board or something, it'll probably split the minute the screw starts going through it. Plywood won't do that to you and it'll maintain a nice strong bond. Don't tape it. Do not tape this patch yet. You just put the patch in there. Everybody wants to put the tape on. Pre-fill your seams with some kind of fastening compound, five minute, 20 minute, Dorabon 90, something like that. Pre-fill the seams, let the fan blow on it, and let it harden up. Then tape over the pre-filled seams. This won't crack, and it makes the job a lot easier.
You want me to add more water? A really great way to keep the dust down is to use a bowl or something underneath where you're sanding. That's a little bit cumbersome, yes. Um, I'm in a very expensive home here, and I could quarantine the whole room off with, you know, like a Dexter type of uh, kill room where there's plastic on, you know, all four sides and the floor, but this right here catches like 90-something percent of it, and I don't need vacuums and everything running in order to collect it. For anybody who may not know, if you're starting out with drywall and you're trying to learn it, just keep practicing. It, it's one of those things that you get better with over time. What I'm using is 20 minute mud. I don't use the all purpose anymore for anything. I use five minute for taping and I use 20 minute for everything else. And the reason I do that is because I wanna be in and out in a day from start to finish, including paint in the ceiling. That's a service that I offer my customers. They like that. They don't want you to have to come back two and three times uh, interfering with their lives to try to fix a hole in the ceiling. So that's what I do. But with that said, the fastest way to get this stuff to dry is to blow a fan on it. So these are fans that are designed for blowing on a wet floor and drying your floor up. I use them for drying drywall compound and it works wonderfully. If you pay close attention to when I'm applying the mud, you'll see that when I get little travelers, little crumbs in there, little pieces of debris that create lumps, when I clean off uh, my uh, trowel, I slide it on the short end of my trough. This way all of the crumbs and all of the debris that's in there, if there is any, it stays on that short little end so I don't reintroduce it next time I apply some. One of the most important aspects of drywall repair is not the application of the mud. Not that that's not important, it is. But if you can hone in on your skills on sanding, you'll do a lot better repairs than if you're honing in on your skills of trying to apply it. The best tips I can give you is if you're going to apply drywall compound onto a, a wall or a ceiling, don't leave anything built up in a corner of a room because it's hard to sand that out. If you want to leave a groove or a, a build up like a, a line where you pulled your trowel off the, the ceiling and it left a lift off mark, you can sand all that out. You can sand off anything that is protruding from the ceiling or the wall, but you can't really always sand off anything that's a crater. So try to keep it smooth with lift off marks. That's fine. Hone in on your skills of sanding. Sand the edges first until you cannot feel where the ceiling and your patch come together. Once you get that down, then sand the middle of the patch and only sand it until it feels smooth to your hands. Don't trust your eyes. Your eyes are going to lie to you. That's why when you watch magic tricks on television or something, you're like, wow, how did he do that? Because you're trusting your eyes. Your eyes are easily fooled, okay? Rub your hand across it. Don't even look at it. And when your hand feels an imperfection, fix it. If it doesn't feel one, then it's not. you're not going to see one either, okay? Something else very important to you, see me applying paint here. Do not apply any paint until you did a skim coat. A skim coat is just putting mud on everywhere that you've put it and then taking it all completely back off again. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but if there's pinholes or little tiny imperfections, it's going to fill those for you. And then you do one quick light sand over it just to make sure that there's no rough spots. And then you can apply the paint. And as you can see here, this, this was a five hour job, but from start to finish, the ceiling looks perfect. It doesn't look like there's any imperfections in it at all. And that's because I took my time and I made sure that 
everything was filled in the way it was supposed to be and everything was sanded to a nice smooth finish not with my eyes with my hands feeling for imperfections your fingers will never lie to you Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. There wasn't a whole lot of chatter or conversation going on in there, but at least you got to see how that drywall patch came out. We're all done. I think it took us five hours. It's two o'clock now. We started at nine. Five hours. That's including setup and cleanup. So probably closer to four and a half hours altogether. That's a nice, uh, nice job done in four and a half hours. I think you'll agree. If you like videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. But you don't have to. If you don't like the video, hit the thumbs down. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you don't want to do anything, don't hit anything. Do me a favor. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.